When Grandma screams, you know what time it is. How's it going, everybody? It's time for another show, and we've got Truck Series champion Travis Quapple joining us. His son Carson is also in the house. Guys, thank you for being here. It's great to be here. Looking forward to it. It's cool. This is the first time we've had dual guests on, and uh, you guys were, were busy. Didn't you guys just come from testing? Yeah, yeah we, we were. Uh, sorry, uh, we were at Hickory yesterday with a super late model, and actually, we were talking about it on the way down here. That's three Wednesdays in a row we've been to Hickory, so we've been putting the time in, getting ready, you know, getting ready for the season and getting geared up. See, Carson, I, I know you see Dad as just Dad, but you don't realize how much of a badass race car driver he is. <laughs> yeah, really, I you wasn't know? around. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, but now, Travis, like, uh, it started, you know, just like for usual kids like on the short tracks tell yeah. us how all of this got going for you yeah for me it was uh you know uh my my dad's best friend growing up my well, my started out my dad owned a body shop so i we, we I always grew up working in the shop you know sweeping floors dumping trash cans and um his best friend owned a car and we he raced weekly at rockford speedway the little quarter mile bull ring there and of course my dad was out on the crew and he kept the car at the shop at our shop there uh, you know, right, right behind our house. So, you know, I'd come home from school every day. Was go to the shop, hang out. You know, just I just grew up in it. And then we were going to the we were going to the races on the weekends. And um, man, I just fell in love with it. You know, that was I played football and baseball and that stuff. But man, I was passionate about racing and um, passionate about spending time in the shop. So, just kind of grew up in it. And that's kind of how I got introduced to short track racing. And and uh, you know, just. It, it caught my, uh, you know, my love and my passion for it immediately. So your your dad didn't drive; he was no. a crew guy. Right. Okay. So yep. when did you say, I, I know, I I, I want to drive? Crew, yeah. Being a crew guy is cool, but yeah, you know, I want to drive. Well, I guess when I was like when I was like 14 years old, um, Jimmy was his name, Jimmy Pearson. He kind of hung up the helmet, and it was like, man, do you, you know, Travis, do you want to drive in a couple of years? You had to be 16 at that, you know, those times. So it's crazy how young the kids start now but anyways um i was like yeah let's let's do that so we we started building the car over the course of a couple seasons um practice leading up to it but when i turned 16 that that summer we went racing and uh it was like in the a late same, model it was a four cylinder oh like, okay, okay like it was called american short tracker four okay. cylinder car we took a mustang off the street put a roll cage in it um you know kind of your standard beginner class right and, and uh Ran that for a couple seasons at Rockford Speedway, won the track championship, and we took the leap from four cylinders right to super late models at, at Madison. Um, so it was it was a big, big step, but uh, my second year running super late models, I won the track championship at Madison. Wow, I was just going to say, what kind of a, a feeling was that going from a four cylinder to now a high yeah. speed, a high horsepower late model with tons of tire to yeah. it? And yeah, a lot of money. I remember. Uh, like my second year or third year running the four cylinder car, my dad's like, well, you know, we need, we go to, let's go to Madison and watch the super late models. And, you know, we're thinking about doing this next year and kind of get, see what you think about it. And I remember standing there, if anybody's been to Madison, you're kind of up the bleachers or, or they got like a walkway. It's kind of up above the stands or above, up above the track. And there's, the cars are so fast. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm, you know, I'm 17 years old. I'm like, what am I getting myself into? And I'm like, yeah, this looks great. You know, but uh, inside I was, I was pretty scared, you know, but um, huge step, you know, I, I never ran anything other than, than Rockford and a little bull ring and to, uh, to start running Madison, the big track, super late models, more horsepower. It was, it was a huge step. And, and who were those, those guys that you had to, who were the guys yeah. that you looked up to when yeah. you were racing? So it was cool. Um, you know, I look back, those are the good old days, right? I remember growing up watching Joe Shear and Dick Trickle, Steve Carlson, uh, the Refner family, the Sauter boys. You know, it was, it was. there's so many, so much talent and so much, you know, those racing families that came from the Midwest. And when I started racing, I raced weekly against Matt Kenseth and I raced weekly against Scott Wimmer, uh, Jay Sauter, Brian Refner. You know, those are like the weekly com competitors. And, um, you know, it was... It was a steep learning curve for sure. At what point did you say we're gonna go on a tour or run with a tour? Yep. I mean, so we, I ran Madison weekly for like two seasons, won the championship in 1996, the mm -hmm. weekly uh, Friday night shows. And uh, the next year we we sprinkled in a couple of ARTCO races, which ARTCO was a little traveling series in the Midwest. We sprinkled in a couple of those races in 95 and 96, but 97 we started running the full um, touring series. 
And then in 90, so we ran 97, 98, 99, 2000, we, we did all the traveling series and raced some local tracks, uh, not real consistently, didn't really chase points, but we raced the, the Arco series and the Remax Challenge series for like four years there. And um, it was great traveling the Midwest, going to different racetracks, going to Colorado, Gateway, you know, of course, all the bull rings at the same time. There were some studs in that Remax Challenge series. There was. <laughs> you, yeah. had, you had Rick Corelli, yep. right? Uh, Eddie Hoffman. Yep. Who else? Uh, Brian Hoppy. Yeah, right? Steve Carlson. I mean, Steve Carlson was the man. Joe Shear. Yeah. Um, it was uh, Al Schill. I mean, there's some some legends in the Midwest. And uh, racing in the Midwest is it's a hotbed, man. And it's incredible. The, the blue collar grit, you know, and, and um, it's... I'm glad, uh, you know, looking back on it, I was, I was proud to, you know, come from those roots, taught me so much racing against those guys. And though that was like the area that brought us like Ted Musgrave yes. and Alan Kowicki. Yes. And speaking of Alan Kowicki, he just, he, uh, yeah. uh, Carson has got uh, a little bit of the, um, the what do you call it? Uh, the the Kowicki Alan Kowicki program. Driver on, development right? program. Yep. You can talk about that a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, back, I think it was 2019, we signed up for it and, uh, you, they picked seven drivers, uh. And then in, at the end of the race season, then uh, they pick one out of those seven to get the fifty-four thousand dollars. The grand prize. Yeah, the grand prize. So it was a cool series. Yeah. I mean, obviously there's money on the line, but you know the the recognition uh, that came with it and the publicity and um, you know those friendships that were involved with it at the same time too. And didn't and that opened the door of Carson for you to do the uh, that Arc of Midwest late model stuff, right? Is that what that did? Uh, yeah, we ran the twenty eight. We ran some twenty eighteen stuff mm -hmm. up there, and then uh, that was just getting ready for the twenty nineteen season. We ran full time in the Arca Tour or Arca Midwest Tour in nineteen, and then uh, yeah, that's about it. Which tracks did you get to run that Dad ran at when he was your age? Uh, Rockford and Madison. Clover, uh, Clover, Dells, Dells, Lacrosse. Yeah, there's yeah. pretty much there's there's it's it's fun because I remember the first time we went to Kakana, Wisconsin International Raceway, which is a really unique place. Mm. Um, it's it's a uh, you know there's there's no other track like in a D shaped half mile, and I we were standing over up on top of the bleachers. He's kind of looking at it like. Oh my gosh! How do you get around this place? You know, it was kind of like that proud dad moment, like, "Well, you got to arc it here, and you know, lift here." But you right, know, right. it was it was kind of fun to be able to, you know, look back at my driving experience twenty twenty some years ago and be able to just pass that on to him and help him speed up his learning curve. Like a, a back in back in my day moment. Yeah, kind of right. Thing. <laughs> yeah, he now, and he ran a lot better than I did, so that's that's good. Now, okay, now obviously your dad didn't drive, so right. there. It, kind of hard for him to kind of give you that driving tips or yeah. advice like that but now your son is driving you're the dad and what is yeah. that relationship like are you bickering at each other uh, you needle each other sometimes <laughs> I like you said I kind of had to cut it on my own and just you know figure things out and uh, a lot of doing the wrong things to figure it out and um, I feel like I'm that dad that uh, man I push him hard him and his younger brother Caden I, I, I push the boys hard but you know, it's, 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 I push them hard because I know they have the ability and the talent, you know, to, to succeed, um, you know, and, and it, and it's just us working on the stuff. So, you know, we, 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 uh, you know, we take a lot of pride in bringing our own stuff to the racetrack and, you know, performing together. It's tough, but you know, there's, there's several times on the truck ride home where I'm like, you know, I'm like, you know what? I rode you pretty hard, dude, and I say things in the heat of the battle, and uh, only just because I'm trying to, where I'm competitive, I want to win, and I know you can do it. So, uh, I don't know. That's my perspective. I'm, I'm sure he's got a little bit different. Do you ever, you ever sit back and you go, "Shit, I, I forget we're supposed yes. to be having fun." At this. And they're, at you know, 14, 15 year old kids. You know, you got to remember, like, okay, this is the first time we've been to this track, or or whatever the situation. And uh, you know, and I think back to when I was. 15, 16 years old. Heck, I didn't know what a wedge was or you know what I mean? And I'm expecting these guys to tell me what the car is doing, what adjustments they want, you know, and hit your hit your line and, you know, hit your marks and all this. So, uh, you know, I push them hard and I ride them pretty hard. But uh, for the most part, they rise to the occasion and, and perform very well. And Carson, you've been also working on the cars, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, getting them together and everything. I really rare for kids nowadays it, yeah it really is absolutely so for you what has helped you actually as far as working on it and then going to the track and driving it uh i think that's one of the main reasons that we're so good with how we are with our cars is i know what i don't really need a crew chief 
I don't really need a crew chief. I, with the late model stuff, I can kind of tell him what to do or what it needs, or he can help me decide on what it needs. Like, I, I know if I need to raise a panner bar, I, need, I know if I need to take rounds out of the springs to where I just think it's better. I'm, that's why I want to speak on that. I've been super impressed with whether it's, it's an outlaw cart, a micro sprint, a midget, the super late model. With, he's been able to, you know, in all those diverse cars and, and disciplines of racing, he's been able to tell me or Mark Daly or Brad Nossinger, the guys that help us out, you know, the car feels like it's doing this. I think we should, you know, like he said, raise the panner bar. I, th- I feel like I need more right front shock or whatever. And it's I'm like, man, you're 17 years old. And the limited amount of laps he has, his feedback and knowledge of what the car does and how it, how it's going to respond to those changes is incredible. So um, I think a great race car driver always makes a great crew chief. You know what I mean? So um, it's fun to work with him. It's fun to to learn just like we did yesterday. We, we banged through some changes. And there's times, you know, yesterday he's like, I think we need to do X, Y, Z. And I'm like, man, I don't know. And sure enough, we, we do it and he's going down the right track. So it's um, it's a lot of fun, you know. I just love working with him and, and seeing him grow and develop. Coming from the stock car world, racing on pavement and everything, how do you end up getting him started in dirt racing, open wheel midgets, yeah. ran the chili bowl? I, I, you know, how did, was it you that said you wanted to try dirt, or who made that decision? Well, originally it was we just kind of we were with Kyle Beatty, he helped us out on some of the Bandolero stuff, and he he had he owns XK chassis, so. First, we rented one of his carts at Millbridge, and I just got hooked, and we just went down that path, really. Yeah, I got hooked, too. Like I, like he said, we were at um, running Bandoleros, summer shootout, doing our own thing, and got to know Kyle just through that. He, he rents Legend Cars and helps out on, the, on that side of it as well. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, and he's like, hey, you know what? You ever heard of Millbridge and these outlaw carts? And I, I hadn't. You know, I, I didn't know what he was talking about, so... Um, he's like, tell you what, I'll, uh, I'll bring a cart next week and you can check it out and, you know, we'll go make some laps. I'm like, oh, okay, sounds cool. And um, he rolls in the following Tuesday for the summer shootout, brand new box stock sitting in the car or in the back of his pickup, all, you know, brand new. And I'm like, well, I'm like, what are we doing? He's like, well, th- I built this for you and, and uh, here's what it costs. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. how about we try it first? So we went and we went we went to like the next day to Millbridge and we watched and, and man, I fell in love with dirt racing. I fell in love with outlaw carts right there. And, um, you know, we're still running there, you know, it was six years ago now. Yeah, I know. You're still running there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. You, you know how frustrating it is walking in the gate each week knowing your competition's 11 or 12 right. years old? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think. Uh, Thanks. Thanks for yeah. making me feel old, you know. He, I think he can speak on, <laughs> on what, you know, he's told me, man, after driving an outlaw cart, everything else feels like it's easier. It feels like it's slow motion. And I think the outlaw carts and uh, the dirt racing, it's its just incredible car control. And I think it's an incredible learning tool to help develop a race car driver. Uh, I'm, Carson, obviously the goal is to move up the ladder to NASCAR. But, mm-hmm. I mean, how much fun are you having on dirt? <laughs> man? I mean, so much. It is way a lot of fun. It's the most fun thing I've ever driven. Outlaw carts are. Um, well, you were pretty excited about that midget. Yeah, the midget. That's uh, yeah. Midgets are really fun. It's like a the midgets feel like an outlaw cart, just smoother. I was just gonna say because yeah. you ran the chili bowl. That's a huge event. Yeah. What was is. that like? It was really crazy. It's nothing. It's like nothing else. It's one of a kind thing. Uh, I think we did pretty good. I think we made it to the D main, finished ninth in the yep. D, which I don't think that's bad for my first time. Our preliminary mate. He, you know, he's. Uh, he made it to the A on his prelim night, won his heat race, won the B main, made it to the D main on the overall night. So uh, I'm super proud of, of him and what he's accomplished already. And I think about my racing career and the path I took. He's 17 years old, man. He's already run the Tulsa shootout. He's run uh, the Chili Bowl. He's won super late model races. You know, it's, it's Won the North-South shootout. Yeah, I, I mean, I interviewed you. Yeah. He, he's won Midwest Tour races in Wisconsin. So – you know, it, the, the future is really bright for him and, uh, you know, the opportunities that we're working on together. We're running some ARCA East stuff now. Um, you know, hopefully we just keep we just keep shipping away at it and we keep grinding it out. That that was going to be my next question for you. What is the next 
uh, a thing for your pavement program. You ran the Arca East race down at New Smyrna. Uh, you had to retire early, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, what is the next step? Is it another Arca race? Yeah, we run Arca this weekend at Pensacola. Uh, okay. I think it's 200 laps. Hopefully, we can do a lot better than we did at New Smyrna and have the car running at the end. Now, have you gone down to test, or do you do any eye racing uh, ahead of time? I do some. When I have time, when I'm out of the shop, not really doing much, I'll do some eye racing, but we haven't tested. I own, my only experience there is I ran a super there two years ago, maybe. Oh, okay. So, oh, so you have I laps there. Yeah, I, I have one race there, yeah. Okay, so that makes you feel I think, you know, that, that was brought up to me in the past that, like, man, we... I think Carson needs to be on iRacing, you know, and he's got to run these laps. And I agree with that. And I think, you know, his perspective might be the kind of similar or what, what he thinks of it. But I think the time in the shop is just as important, you know, learning about the race car, what makes it go fast, what, you know, changing the truck arm angle does or whatever, um, how it affects it is just as valuable and important as sitting behind that computer cutting laps. So like, he tells me that some places, you know, eye racing is important. I, you know, there's some similarities. Um, and, and, you know, there's other drivers that say, you know, they're married to it and they learn so much from it. So I think to each their own, you know, what, however it works, whatever works for them. Well, working on the cars also helps you crew chief the car from the seat, too. Yes. There's, there's mm-hmm. a very few of them out there that can do it nowadays. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I'm, you know, I, I don't, I'm not a fan of the drive, you know, the driver that shows up with a, helmet bag and a checkbook you know um i grew up working on my stuff all hours of the night you know sacrificing family time or going out with your buddies and things like that and i i'm a strong believer in you know if you work for it somehow some way you'll get there or opportunities will be presented to you so uh right that's what we're doing right now we're just grinding it out you know we're trying to find sponsorship and funding to keep this arc east thing going we're going to do a couple more here coming up but um you know, we'll just keep chipping away at it. Well, uh, uh, you've, like you said, you know, you've had great opportunities come along I- I when you were moving up the ladder. Mm-hmm. What are some of the big differences that you notice from you trying to get opportunities compared to the, his generation? Yeah. yeah, it's 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 a one eighty. You know, when when I got the fo- a phone call in two thousand two thousand end of two thousand middle two thousand about driving a, a, for a truck series team. It was never there. Not one word was mentioned about uh, how much sponsorship you have, or um, you know, can your family afford X amount of dollars per race. It was, it was. Hey, we have this tr- established truck team. We're looking for a driver. We're looking for a young talent. You know that it's nowadays. It's completely opposite. You know, it's how much money do you have? How many sponsor or how many races can you afford to buy? And if you can drive a race car, that's a bonus. You know, so. Um, we're uh we're kind of doing it old school and I, th- I feel like that at the end of the day if you're out there winning races and putting your name out in front of them uh consistently opportunities will come you can you, you just can't deny that at old school is definitely cool what you're doing too because i like the fact that you're working on the cars and you're learning them like that but just like going back to the i racing is there any like the technical aspect of it or is there anything that you get out of the i racing that you apply to actually being at the track uh, not really. I mean, there's a little bit for me. It's more just like learning the track, like not even really the line that you run. It's just, okay, the track's here, track's here. Like it's just, it is similar. There's a few similarities, but it's not like I change stagger on, on the iRacing race car and it transfers over to my car. It's just completely different but, in that way. But <laughs> I, I will say, you know, three years ago, you were like, hey, dad, I'm loose in. I'd be like, all right, put some wedge in it or lower the panner bar. You know, so I think that aspect of it yeah, you, you some, learn what some. changes do to eye racing and you know so there's you some relativity to the, big, to the real life yeah okay so there's some relative so that he doesn't ask me for changes on eye racing anymore so <laughs> <laughs> i think he's trying to figure it all out on his own now uh, this weekend in pensacola you're going down there not running for points this year so what is the goal going in uh just finish is the main goal and then uh anything that comes with that is just a bonus i mean we, we'd love to go win That'd be amazing, but right now we're just trying to finish. We, we didn't finish New Smyrna, so yeah, just I mean, to one. I, I I fully expect us to be a contender for the win. Um, you know, it, it, New Smyrna was a big disappointment, but that's part of racing. You know, we had an ignition problem and the, the car had a miss. We just couldn't track it down in time. Uh, but you know, there's a lot of effort put into it. Bruce Cook's team is a great group of guys, and he has great equipment. So 
I mean, there's some big teams we're racing against Gibbs and David Gillen Racing, you know, and, and, and there's some talented well, you guys. You guys are a big team, too. I mean, you, you guys have got uh, uh, GMS, right? Isn't that They the, help out the some. Team? Yeah, I mean, it's it, we're running Bruce Cook's car, but, okay. you know, it's he's got two full-time employees, I think. So it's, it's you know, it's still kind of that uh, old-school way, you know, but we, we, we're lucky to have a little bit of sponsorship help from – some relationships we built to be able to afford to go do this. Now, who's talking in your ear during the race? Is Dad spotting for you? Yeah, he's oh, spots. okay. All right. Now, okay. Now let's hear it. Let's yeah. let we got to hear like a, a funny back and forth you guys have had over the radio. Oh, <laughs> I think you know. Yeah, he can while he's thinking about something. To... There's a, there's a few times I just want to unplug it. <laughs> a few times. Uh, like when? Uh, when we're running about tenth at Hickory, dead sideways. I just want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm screaming like, "Make your arc! What are you doing?" You know, and he, he's I'm like, I'm, "I'm spinning out." But I think you know, I grew up watching, or I watched him grow up racing from the time he was eight years old in Bandoleros to, you know, and I feel like as a father, I have I I know what buttons I need to push or what he's lacking or what he needs to hear, you know, to get the most out of the situation. So I'm sure there's times where he's like just shut up. I've heard this before, you know, but, um, you know, I feel like there's times I know when he needs me to crack the whip or, or applaud him and tell me he did a good job. So uh, there's, there's a lot of times where things can get frustrating, but in what areas do you think that dad being the driver helps you compared to some of these other kids that are just having dads that pay the freight or just mm -hmm. hire a crew guy to, to work on a car? It's definitely whenever we go to a new track with the stock car, the dirt stuff he, he really has no clue on. So <laughs> it's more just me on the dirt stuff, but the ARCA car and the Super 8 model, when we go up north or when we run a new track or I'm just first time running an ARCA car, he can help me out on what the tire does, how they feel compared to Supers. So everywhere we go new, he's usually there to help. Do you, yeah. do you get into any other kind of extreme sports or anything like that, or is it just racing all the time? Just racing. Just <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, you know, it was like other most kids, he was into dirt bikes and four-wheelers, and there was plenty of, oh, this dirt bike quit running. You know, we tried to fix it for a couple of days, and we're like, screw this, just go buy another one. You know, shove that one in the corner. Oh, Kobe Adams got one of our dirt bike motors still sitting there waiting to get rebuilt. He managed to blow up. Yeah. So we got a little, we got a, dead section of four wheelers and dirt bikes in the corner if we ever get some time we'll get them running again now obviously uh moving up the ladder going to cup is you know where you want to go right mm -hmm. but um where do you kind of see yourself in the next five years what's the next couple of steps you want to take carson hopefully we just i just make my way up through the truck series xfinity into the cup series there's no guarantees and there's a small chance you get it but hopefully i fit in that little small chance that i got now, are there any connections that you have from the truck series over the years where you can call yeah. one of your buddies and say, check out my kid? Or, not because I'm saying it's yep. my kid, but, you know, he, yeah. he's got a pretty good track record so yep. far. I've definitely been doing that, you know, especially over the past couple of years and just keeping those relationships, whether it's with a manufacturer or, or a race team or, or a crew chief or whatever. Uh, be like, hey, you know, you know, I'll send him a picture. Hey, we won again Wednesday night at Millbridge and – or we won a super late model race last weekend, just kind of trying to keep his name out there in front of people. Because nowadays, if you don't have the family funding or if you don't have uh, you need a backer some to, sort of sponsor, yeah, you need a you, backer, you right? You need Toyota nowadays. or Chevrolet or Ford or somebody to step and be like, you know what, this is our next Kyle Larson or whatever, Christopher Bell, we're going to take him up the ladder. So um, I'm doing all I can with my previous relationships to kind of just keep his name and picture in front of him. You know, it really is amazing, too, because, you know, I've heard other media colleagues say, you know, this guy made it because he didn't he didn't have money and this guy made it because he didn't have money. Technically, they don't. But there was some support. There's always somebody. There's always a backer yep. or some support coming from somewhere. Yeah, and, that, absolutely. and that's the biggest thing. Absolutely. And, and that's, uh, you know. I'm sure, like, I'm, if anybody's familiar, Kyle Larson had backers, you know, and he's that kid that came from nowhere, but he uh, he he drove for people. People put him in their car. People gave him opportunities, and that's that's just what we're trying to do with Carson. Is just keep pushing and grinding it out, and you know, I, I feel like the long hours and, and all that's going to pay off. Now, what would you say your driving style is like? Because you, I've raced with you on the track on dirt. I've seen you on dirt, and you know, I've seen you be aggressive on dirt, and then I've also seen you race on pavement. So what, what would you say your style is? 
Man, I honestly don't know. I couldn't really tell you. Uh, I'd have to be outside looking in, but I just feel that I can adapt very well to different surfaces and different cars, and I'm just all around really good. What about you? What's your opinion of his driving style? I watch him on the dirt track, and I think he's insane. Like, yeah. He's like a kamikaze. <laughs> and it's just like little brother. You have to tell me, I've, I've yeah. seen it firsthand. You have little to tell brother's me. more calculated and like, okay, I'm gonna make this move. Da da da. He's just like full send. He's balls in the balls yeah. in the wall. I know. I've run with him before. And I, only one time in my in my career have I ever beaten you. Once that was it. <laughs> that was at Mountain Creek. That was the one yeah. time I ever yeah. beat you. But it's yeah. especially you know I think if anybody's watched the races at Millbridge, you run the wall. And that's that's the only way you're gonna win, or that's the fastest way. And he has figured it out. You know, he's he's run on the wall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've noticed. And that. it's it takes a special. I have literally seen yeah. you two wheels up on the wall yeah. at Millbridge, and that's it, how you got to run. The it place. takes a special person to be able to figure that out, or the balls to be able to do it, or the commitment level. You know, is is incredible. And and uh, but we go asphalt racing. I feel like he's, you know, he he's learned. He's learned to rein that in, mm -hmm. and he's learned, okay, the, on asphalt, it's a whole different discipline. The race car has to do the work. I think dirt racing, the driver can kind of make it up. How, how much did you have to calm down when you got into the stock car? Quite a bit. It's just <laughs> you actually have to use a brake pedal. You, if, you break, <laughs> if your brake pedal breaks off the middle race, you're actually pretty screwed with a, with a stock car. Um, just everything, throttle control like with the carts and stuff. I got to I got to tell him a couple. I got to tell a couple of uh, cart stories. I want to hear him. Yeah, that's so, why we're here. We're here to hear stories. It, it goes back to like maybe he was 12. We were running a 125 class, and he comes in. The motor's not running. I'm like, what's the matter? What's the matter? The gas pedal's just laying there unhooked. I'm like, oh, crap. We're done. You know? Well, Kyle Beatty comes running over. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we're done. He's like, do you think he can take the, you know, the, car, the, the key and carburetor, the McCuney, whatever it was, and it's got the throttle cable, cable coming out of the top? He's like, you think he can drive it like this? You know, just grabbing the cable and lifting the, <laughs> lifting the bore open. I'm like, what do you that think? It sounds like something Kyle would yeah. say. I'm like, what do you think, kid? He's like, I'll give it a shot. So he goes out there and he's like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> driving with this hand and like running the throttle with this hand. And he's like passing cars. He ran the fourth. And I was like, afterwards, I'm like, dude, that was the coolest thing I think I've ever seen. Like, you're a race car driver, without a doubt. <laughs> it was weird. It so. was weird not using my foot, using my hand. It was, and it was really weird. Here's another good one. Just this last summer, I think it was, we go, we're go. we running at Millbridge, and our four-stroke motors are, are pretty bad, right? Like, they're they're pretty stout. Mm -hmm. And he's, Yeah, I know. He's leading the heat race. <laughs> he's leading the heat race, and this thing's like, he straightawayed him in the heat race, and he goes into the corner, and the thing is just pounding the chip. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I'm ready to smack him in the face when he comes in, right? I'm like, you idiot. These things are a lot of money. And uh, he's like, afterwards, he's like, oh, the throttle was stuck. And I was having to pull the clutch. And, and then I'd let the clutch go. And, and then I figured out after a couple <laughs> laps, I could just hit the kill switch. And then, then I'd let the kill switch go and fire it back up. And I'm like, holy crap. Like, that's... That's so some just, thinking on your toes. So you're just light switching it. Yeah, right? it wasn't easy. Like, -da 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 -da, -da 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 -da. <laughs> and like driving away from the pack, I'm like, holy crap, dude. Like, you're my hero. <laughs> Did you have to pull anything like that in the car no when you way. were driving? No way. I would have yeah. I would have called in scared, right? Like, I would have oh tapped God. out. All right. Well, get into stories. And we got to ask you, uh, this was while before you were, you may even been a baby, but one of the craziest championships I ever saw in yeah. NASCAR was your championship <laughs> that you won in the truck series. You, tell us how it went down. So we went in, it was a 2003, excuse me, the 2003 season. Brendan gone basically dominated that whole year. He, they were the fastest truck. They won a bunch of races and we were always kind of like the, we were always kind of the second place truck. You know, we were con super consistent, uh, 22 top tens out of 25 races, finished six or second, six times. I think we finished all but one lap. Like we were just there every week, every week, every week we were there, but we never had the speed to win. We won one race at Bristol. Um, so we go into the last race of the year, Homestead. Brendan's got like a 40 point lead over myself, Dennis Setzer and Ted, Ted Musgrave and me, Ted and Dennis are all within like nine points, but Brendan's out there. He's got it. All he's got to do is have a good safe day, finish 10th. He's got the championship wrapped up. We get about, I don't know, halfway in the race or so. I come off a of turn four and there's trucks everywhere and debris and I'm like, dang, I think that was the Orleans truck, you know? And I'm like, was that the Brendan wreck? 
and they're like oh yeah he's done he's wiped out and it was like holy crap now now the the whole story has changed here we got a now we got like a legit shot at this you know your your attitude changed and you know we were just kind of like i'm racing these three guys for second you know that, or these two guys for second now it's like i'm racing these two guys for the championship so uh it came down to the last 10 laps or so and we're running four wide myself and musgrave and setzer and it was it was unbelievable the hard racing and then uh, that was that last restart, wasn't it? Yes, there was a restart with like two to go. I, I watched it on TV, but it yep. was I'm wild. running like fifth, I think. Yeah. Uh, Musgrave sixth, and I forget where Setzer was. He was, but basically, where I was, I was safe. Everything's cool. But if Ted passed me, I think he was going to win the championship. So all I had to do is keep Ted behind me. Uh, we had enough of a cushion on Setzer. We get to the restart zone, and that was the old days where we had single file restarts and. So Ted takes, Ted, I, I kind of look in my left side mirror and I see Ted like to my left rear and he's up to my door. I'm like, oh man, this ain't good. You know, I got, I got to stay ahead of him. We race it out. I think he finished ahead of me, but I'm not, I, I think he did, but it was the checkered flag falls. They're like, oh, well actually before that we're taking the white and I see the black flag waving. I'm like, hmm, this ain't good. And they're like, yeah, I think so. My Did you radio. think it was for you? No, I knew it wasn't for me because I okay. knew I did nothing wrong. My crew chief's like, I think they're, I think Setzer is going to get penalized for jumping that start. And I'm like, holy cow, this is. I'm trying to do the math, like who finishes where, and there's three points per position. And uh, we take the checkered, and they're like, well, Setzer beats you, but pretty sure he's going to be black flag, so you should be the champion. And I'm like, holy cow, I can't figure this out. And we got like a 30 second cooldown lap like i want to do burnouts and <laughs> you know if we won the championship i want to i want to raise hell you know so uh so at this point you everything is still unsure yeah <laughs> no totally unsure and it's a cooldown lap and they're like well nascar wants you to park on the front stretch at the start finish line so they got to sort it out they want to review some video and i'm like oh gosh this is really going to be awkward if you know it doesn't go our way and I look to the left, they're setting up the championship stage. You know, there's the trophy sitting there. There's people everywhere. So they had all of you guys that could have won. No, there. it was just me. Oh, it was just you? Just me. Yep. Oh, okay. So they, I think they kind of thought, you know, this is what the direction we're going. But it's like, hold on. We want to, we just want to make sure. And it was no less than 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And we're sitting there and guys are coming up my window talking to me and I'm like, oh my God, this is stressful. You know, you like, were in that truck forever. Yeah, it was horrible. And then uh, finally they announced that, you know, it, w it went my way and I was the 2003 truck series champion. And what a night it was because we, we didn't have, my crew guys didn't have, and back then the, the banquet was the next day or the next night. And we didn't have tuxes. I didn't have suits. Nobody had nothing because we weren't going to win the championship. And of course I didn't have any sort of speech written. Didn't have, we weren't prepared for nothing. We were ready to go home and call it a year. Right. So they're flying down like wives and they're bringing, they're bringing their husband's suits and we're renting tuxedos. And, um, Steve post was kind of like our kind of PR guy, you mm -hmm. know, at the time. So I remember clearly as I can remember it, we leave the racetrack super late at night. Cause we, all the pictures and all this, we hit the t Taco Bell drive through Steve and I, and the champions get, dinner. Oh yeah. <laughs> we get like a 10 pack of tacos and we go to the hotel room and we're carving out a speech and who we got to thank. And it was just so surreal, you know, just how things just flipped 180 degrees in a matter of minutes. And that was, you know, after that truck championship, you went right to cup. It was not like you went to Xfinity. Yep. Uh, how did yeah. the door open for, and not only that going to Penske, Yeah. like, like you know, Looking back, yeah. you drove for some huge teams over the years. Yeah. Listen, your dad drove for some huge teams, Carson, okay? Understand? Yeah. Penske, Robert Yates, Roush, Roush, I mean. Childress. Oh, my God. Now, how did that whole deal yeah. go from the truck championship to a cup ride? So there was one year in between there. I won the truck series championship. Had some opportunities, but the, the thing that was really intriguing to me was Toyota came into the truck series in 2004, and I had an opportunity to drive for one of the, one of the teams there. Uh, it was called Bang Racing. I remember. Yep. So it um, was he was like a dot com millionaire or something yeah. like that. Right? Well, he, whether he really was or wasn't, I don't know. But somehow the money was there, and we went racing, and we won. I won Toyota's first Truck Series race for him at Michigan, of all places. Uh, we won later in the year at, at uh, Loudon, 
and uh, that that whole thing kind of blew up. You know, bills didn't get paid, drivers didn't get paid, and uh, so that blew up. But at, you know, it was cool to get that first win for Toyota. And again, it was building my resume, which led to my, my rookie year was with Penske Racing, Penske Jasper Racing, the 77 Kodak car. You ever go knocking on Toyota's door and go, hey, you know, remember me? How, still, about, helping, how about helping Sunny Boy I over still here? throw some texts out every now and then, you know, yeah. because they do a great job with driver development and looking at young talent. So I've kept those relationships open. That would be cool. And if it's something that could lead to something yeah, for us, that would be fantastic. All right. Now. <laughs> you, you told me to ask you about this when we talked. You, you told me to ask you about flipping Richard Childress. Oh my car. gosh! <laughs> yep. So it was my rookie year in Truck Series in 2001, and it was. Um, See, you, you, you're not the only one that can get upside down. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had one. It was it was a good one. So uh, it was un- unfortunate circumstances of Dale Senior's death uh, in 2001 led to some opportunities for me. You know, Harvick and Mike Dillon, they were scheduled to drive these Bush cars for Childress all year. And what with Harvick being vaulted into Cup, uh, some some of the standalone events kind of got, uh, well, I guess it wouldn't be, it was the companion where, like, we were in, the Bush cars were in Kentucky, and I think Cup was somewhere across the country. So, uh, anyways, it was like May or June of 2001, my rookie year in trucks. I'm six months into being in North Carolina, being a big-time race car driver, and uh, Richard Childress calls. And I'll never forget it. Like that was back in the day. You had like the, the you know, the cordless phone, and he had for, like caller ID was a big deal. And like Richard Childress comes up on the caller ID. I'm like, what the hell? So we answer it, and you know, like, hey, we're interested in you having you having you run a couple of bush races for us or whatever. I'm like, I'm doing backflips. You know, I'm super pumped. So, all right. So I go up there. We go to RCR. We talk to them. Get it all worked out. But we're gonna go. My I'm gonna run my first race at Kentucky in June but we're gonna go test. Okay, sounds great. So we go there and we're fast, like everything's cool. But if anybody knows, is familiar with Kentucky, man, the back stretch is super flat, entry to three is super flat, and then it picks up the banking. So the car is really a handful getting into three, it's super light. So, man, I'm getting, I'm getting more, you know, comfortable with the car, confidence is building. I'm, I'm gonna bust one off here, right? I'm gonna show these guys what this kid from Wisconsin can do. So I I hog it off into three, and it's like, oh 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 oh. I spun that thing around, backed it in the wall, slapped the front, destroyed this bush car, and this is like this is our primary. Like this is we're racing in two weeks. Like oh crap. So well, I'm thinking I'm I'm out of here. This ain't gonna work. So I watch Harvick test the rest of the day in his car. And then we go to the we we're at the hotel that night. They're like, hey, I think we're Harvick's gonna shake her down in the morning. You're going to test that car the rest of the day. I'm like, oh, cool. All right. So I'm back in. So <laughs> I go out there. Harvick busts off a couple laps, kind of lays the benchmark. I, I strap in and go and got her off a of turn two this time. Got her loose, loose chased it, spun her around, backed it in, slapped the front. Second car. Killed a second car. <sighs> I'm like, surely I'm done. You know, I'm tail tucked. Test is over early. We're out of race cars. We fly home. We're just like, eh, see you guys. That was fun. They call me a couple days later, like, you know, man, you had great speed. We just got to figure out how to not wreck these race cars. So we go to we go to the race, qualify second. Everything's cool. And then uh, we're running great. We're running top 10. Everything's cool. And next thing I know, I'm like, ah, my fingers are numb. Like something don't feel right. So I like kind of stretch my arm out to like shake it out a little bit. And it literally just drops to the floorboard. And we're running Kentucky at 180, and I'm like, uh-oh, this ain't good. So your arm f- went just dead. completely dead, like lost the feeling. Were you were you sitting wrong? I mean, so with all the different cars and whatnot, I ended up driving and sitting in somebody else's seat. It was maybe Mike Dillon's or Harvick's seat or something. I just I didn't fit. And back in 2001, you didn't have these custom molded seats. It was just get in and go, and. So I'm out there, all of a sudden I'm losing like a half second a lap, and the crew's like, what's going on, what's going on? You you know, something wrong with the car? And the push to talk button's over here, and I can't, I can't let go of this hand to talk. So I'm like, this arm's just laying there dead. <laughs> and it's got nothing. And you can't communicate. Can't talk. And they're like, we're doing, we cycle into green flag stops. And they're like, if you can hear us, you know, pit next lap. I'm like, okay. So I drive this thing down to pit road, and I, prop my left my knee up 
to hold the wheel and I literally take this harm, grab my fire suit, put it on the shifter so I could downshift. And then, so I, once I got to the pits, got it parked, I put it on the wheel so I could talk. I'm like, hey, my arm went dead. You know, I need some seat padding or something in here to get my, get some blood flowing again. God. They're like, okay. So they send me off, run and run and run and yellow comes out, put a bunch of padding in my seat. So everything's back to cool. But we were, during that whole process, we were slow. We lost a lap, just making laps at this point. I don't know, it was getting late in the race. I come off a of turn two, there's Rich Bickle sideways, oh, spinning no. out, and I hit him with my right front, flip the car over, and we just do the slow slide all the way down the back stretch. On your roof. Yep. So my, my <laughs> debut with Childress was upside down on the roof in a shower of sparks and three destroyed race cars. So never that was that was it. Never got a call back, <laughs> never got a fourth chance with, with and, uh, and that with was Richard. all. That was that was it. And I I remember like two weeks later, uh, I got a check from Childress Racing in the mail, and I'm like, man, I feel really guilty about depositing this, you know. But I Don't. did. You yeah. Did your job. <laughs> you, yeah, you were there. To I go. did. But that was a that was my one and only race with Richard Childress, and uh, man, I. I was not proud of that one, for sure. <laughs> well, now you, well, now you're going racing with your son now, and you're yeah. trying to build his career, which is cool. Uh, besides the ARCA stuff and the late model stuff, are you going to do m more dirt racing, midget racing this year? What does the rest of this year consist of? Oh, uh, yeah, so right now we're just probably focusing on some of the micro stuff and uh, maybe some midget races. Um, Mark Daly, I think we, we might have some midget races planned. Uh, not too sure yet. We haven't talked much, but the micro for sure, and then maybe some midget stuff. That'll be awesome. I'll keep track of you. You actually got to bring the outlaw cart that you run out to Mountain Creek this year because I'm helping to run the, the show out we there. Do so that. Come I on, got to show some support we to love us that track too. at Mountain That's Creek Speedway. You've, you guys have won there before, and uh, yep. yeah. But we want to thank you both for coming on the Absolutely. show. Really, it was great to have you guys on. Travis, we got to have you back on yep. again because yeah, we only got to like 2001. Right, we got a long uh, we, ways to we go. We got to scratch the surface. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we didn't even scratch the surface of the Cup Series yep. and Robert Yates and all of that. But definitely want to have you guys back. Thank you very yep. much. And thanks for having us. Yeah, want to thank you all for checking us out today. I'm the Derek Pernasiglio Show, and like always, we'll see you the next time. Bye.